A Bargain is Struck, May 29th, 1936. So, so we're back, back to Abilene's time. To Abilene's time, Great Depression. Yep. Miss Sadie looked to be done for the day. Her voice had gotten raspy toward the end of her fortune telling, and she breathed like she'd been carrying something heavy. Because remember that whole story about um, the creek and the clan, that was all Miss Sadie's conjuring of that memory based on the letter that Abilene had given her. I wanted my dime back. I said I wanted to know about my daddy. That's just some old story from some 20 from 20 years ago about two people I don't even know. Her eyes narrowed a bit and she raised her chin as if she had just figured me out. You show me a letter. And I tell you what the letter shows me. Next time you should be more specific about what it is you are seeing. Seeking. Seeking. I didn't plan on being there a next time. So she'd told me a story about Ned and Jinx, a made up story about two names that she read in the letter. I pictured the yellow and green fishing lure in the Lucky Bill cigar box. Mm. Wasn't it a yellow and green fishing, Little King fishing, fishing lure? lure? It was yellow in and green that caught the catfish. It caught the catfish. It is so bright, a blind fish would see it. <laughs> but a bump. Um, she knew the mementos I had, and she zeroed in on the fishing lure, mentioning it in the letter to conjure her story. Anybody could do that. She doesn't believe Miss Sadie. I looked at Miss Sadie sitting there, her leg propped up. She was a pathetic sight. What kind of purveyor of the future could only tell stories from the past? Go home, she said. Communing with the spirits is a privilege. I have ointment on top shelf just behind baking soda above the icebox, but I will get it myself. She sure gave good directions if she was planning to get it herself. Do you think she was hinting for her to get yes. it? I'll get it, I said with no small amount of reluctance. Long as you don't charge me another dime for the privilege. I maneuvered my way through the maze of velvet and fringe into her pantry and retrieved the nearly empty jar of salve. I gave it a whiff and, near, and it nearly singed my nostrils. What is this stuff? It's hawthorn root, she said, scooping out the remainder and rubbing it onto her leg. It, it helps to increase circulation. She oh, moaned a little, oh. massaging her swollen leg. Mm. It was then that I could see oh. the... Hawthorne root. Thank you, Miss Sadie. It was then that I could see the wound that was causing her so much distress. What happened to your leg? I asked with a grimace. I catch it on barbed wire. It's slow to heal. That was putting it mildly. That sore with its scabbing and yellow pus looked to have gone from bad to worse in about another mile past that. If you tell me where another jar is, I'll fetch that for you and then I'll be on my way. There's no more. I gather the last of the hawthorn roots near the cemetery last night, but I'm sure there is more to be found elsewhere. I looked outside at the scorching sun. Uh, maybe you haven't been outside lately, but there's not much growing around here. There's not enough water to fill a thimble. There's water. It's deep and hidden, but there's always water. How do you know? Because I know what my father knew and his father before him. It is what diviners know. Your people are all <coughs> fortune tellers? I hope they were better at it than she was, but I didn't say so. No, we are a family of diviners. We see and understand things most people overlook. We read the signs of the land. 
You mean like those hill people who walk around with the jiggly stick thinking they can find underground wells? <sighs> she made a guttural scoffing sound. Pa! What does one need with a stick? All one needs is eyes and ears. The earth speaks loud enough when it wants to be heard. That was creepy. Um, highlight. <laughs> Ooh, don't do that. Um, highlight. The earth speaks loud enough when it wants to be heard. I was beginning to have no doubt that she heard things. This woman was not right in the head. All right, then. You have a nice day, I said, backing toward the door. I, I believe there's still a matter to be settled about my broken pot. It survives a boat ride all the way from Hungary. That's Hungary. In Europe, where the war is. And he's now in pieces. Hungary. Hungary. Uh, that explained the accent. Sort of. I stood my ground. Well, it wouldn't be broken if you hadn't taken my compass. Take your compass. I'm out to gather half on route and find something on my property. How am I to know it is yours? She had a point, I thought, as she winced, rubbing her leg. Uh, I was surprised she could make it to the cemetery and back, but figured that was why her leg had swelled up so bad today. I'd offer to pay for the pot, but I don't have that kind of money. Yes, it is worth much more than the coin you have remaining in your pocket. The hair on the back of my neck prickled. I didn't believe in fortune tellers, but how had she pulled that one off? How did she know that she just had one more coin in her pocket? So, Miss Sadie said, knitting her fingers together. It appears you have something I want and I have something you want. She said her W's like V's. You have something I want and I have something you want. Oh, that's a much better Miss Sadie. Yeah. Yeah. You have my compass, but what could I have that you want? I mean, want. Two good legs. She said, punctuating each word. I wasn't sure where this was going, but I knew I wasn't going to like it. You will come here to do a few odd jobs. Any job for her would be odd, I thought. But she had me over a barrel, meaning didn't have a choice. I did break something of hers, and I wanted my compass back. For how long, I asked. You will know when you have finished. She handed back the letter I'd given her and suddenly I found myself heading toward the front door. I stopped short. There, just inside, was my compass, hanging on a single nail, daring me to take it. I gave it a strong look but knew I'd broken her pot and needed to make restitution. I marched down her rickety steps, a bead of sweat already trickling its way down my back. Curiosity had set in. I ran back to Shady's place, clomped up the wooden steps to my room, and reached under the floorboard for the Lucky Bill cigar box. Dumping the contents onto the bed, I found the fishing lure I hadn't paid much attention to. The words from Miss Sadie's story came back to me as I looked at the fancy green and yellow spotted lure. The underside of the lure in pretty gold lettering read, Wiggle King, so wonderful, it'll so, catch a blind fish. So colorful. Oh, so colorful, it'll catch a blind fish. See, I'm blind, I can't read that. Get it? Fish can't see color, but yeah. it's so... It's so colorful, it'll catch a color. blind fish. At that moment, I wished I'd never set foot on the path to, to perdition. perdition. Next up, likely suspects. In our next story, please join us.